and welcome to Charged Online. My name is Grace. I'm the lay pastor for youth and students at St John's. And at Charged, we're here to love God, love one another as we learn to love ourselves and to go and share that love with our communities. That's our vision at Charged. And can you believe it? Our name, well, we rebranded a year ago. Can you believe it's been a year already? Why don't you take a look at our vision videos from back then to remind yourselves what you're a part of. Today is our last Charged Online video of term and maybe uh, for the foreseeable future. If we are able to be back in person from September full time, that is our aim. And we're going to be thinking about how we maintain an online presence going forward. That might mean more videos like this at different times, podcasts that you can listen to. If you guys have any ideas of online content that we can be sharing with uh, our friends and families and telling people about Jesus or things that you'd like to hear more about, please do let us know and we can set those up. This morning we have the final question in our Google It series, which we're going to be hearing from Gabe and Wendy later. We have another uh, of Ask Andy's questions and more worship videos from you guys. What a blessing they have been. Thank you so much for all that you've been involved in, whether you've done videos for, for Christmas or for Easter, for different little things, where you've sent in your entries. It's been such an encouragement uh, to work with you and to explore the Bible and everything that Jesus has done. Next Sunday is our final in-person session, which means it's your final opportunity for the Pod Wars Challenge. Next week, one pod will be gunged and one pod will be celebrating their victory as they head off for their treat out at the place of their choice. So um, if you haven't done any of the bonus challenges, here they are. So we have the seven daily prayers, uh, a poster about why do we pray, the God's name video, so when we studied God's names, which which of his names you most related to, five things that you and your friends would want God's intervention on, uh, how do you pray video, so asking someone in church, not your mum or dad, uh, how they pray, and last time our challenge was, if I can find it, it was to film yourself saying the great commission and the greatest commandment off by heart without any words, no cheating, uh, recording yourself saying that um, as that is part of our vision at Charged. So there are six bonus challenges there uh, to get five extra points each on them. That's 30 points. Yes, 30 points. So um, do get them in before Sunday because that could make it or break it. Without further ado, shall we pray and then crack on with our worship? Holy Spirit, would you fall in the places that we are watching this from? Would you come and meet each of us at our point of need? Thank you that we've been learning that we can pray to you wherever, whenever and whatever you love to hear from us. Father, I pray that for each of us, we would hear your voice this morning. Would you restore us and renew us? Would you shine your light of hope into whatever situation that is burdening us? We want to give you praise and thanksgiving for who you are and what you've done. So thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's worship now.
Hello and welcome to our Charge Google It series. My name is Gabe and today I'm joined by Wendy, a local Christian counsellor and psychotherapist who studied at the London School of Theology. Hey Gabe, how are you today? I'm good, thank you. How are you, Wendy? I'm doing just fine. Today we're going to be ask, asking Wendy our last question in our series this term. What does Christianity say about mental health? So, Wendy, what do you think? Well, what I'd say, Gabe, is it doesn't specifically use the words mental health in the Bible, but it talks more about uh, the condition of the soul, the heart, the spirit. And we have lots of examples in the Bible of um, particular examples of people struggling. Um, and we also have examples of just people, uh, what we call lamenting, talking, uh, speaking out in the Psalms, and in various other parts of the Bible where people speak of their sadness, their grief. Um, it's all, all through the Bible. Where can we find scripture about mental health in the Bible? So the first place I would go is uh, 1 Kings 19. And 1 Kings 19 tells the story of what happens to the prophet Elijah after he has his confrontation with King Ahab and Queen Jezebel and the, um, the prophets of Baal. And he actually is quite successful. Um, God responds to his prayers and um, he is able to point to, to God in that setting. But he then runs away. Um, and he takes shelter in this ravine. It's called the Kareth Ravine. He takes shelter in this Kareth Ravine, and he, um, he says to God, I wish I was dead, because he's been so fearful, it's been so difficult, they're after him, um, and he is exhausted, and um, he feels he's the only one that actually is uh, keeping God's word. And what happens through this particular part, um, you'll read about that uh, God ministers to him in several different ways. He, he ministers to his physical self. He um, has ravens bring him food. Um, he rests and he sleeps for a really long time. Um, he's given encouragement. Uh, he has a, you know, he comes out of this with like a renewed purpose. Um, 
and uh, God gives him an assistant uh, to help him with his burden. And by the time, so he goes into it in depression and depletion, and he comes out of it with renewed purpose, with hope for the future, with understanding that there are others that are still keeping to God's word. Um, he's not the only one. And he goes about continuing as a, as a prophet of God um, after this really difficult time. Um, so I think that's, there's like a really good model of how to um, minister to someone who's struggling with a mental health issue. Um, we also see different things um, in the Bible, like King Saul. Um, when King Saul, that's in uh, 1 Samuel, when King, King Saul is disrupted by um, kind of a spiritual battle, uh, evil uh, spirits are tormenting him. And uh, he has King David, he has, well, he's not King David yet, um, but David uh, plays a musical instrument, the lyre, and the music soothes the discontent in Saul. Um, that's, that's an area. Um, of course, we have Jonah. So after, you know, Jonah, quite rebellious. Um, after he has rebelled against God, and then God puts him back on track, if you remember the story of Jonah, um, he uh, prophesies to the people of Nineveh, his mortal enemies, by the way, um, and they uh, repent, and they're saved, and then Jonah has a complete crash, kind of like Elijah, and has a little bit of a hissy fit um, about his experience, and, you know, if you were going to save him anyway, why'd you, you know, he laments, he yells at God and tells him, like, I don't understand why you made me do that when you were going to save him anyway, and, um, he has uh, an experience of um, disappointment and disillusionment, and he withdraws. Um, so, and, and actually, it's not really resolved in terms of the story. It just kind of ends there. Um, so those are good places to look. Um, other places, uh, as I said earlier, just all throughout um, the Book of Psalms, um, talks about restoring the soul. Um, renew, uh, in Romans, there's a real clear uh, passage in Romans 12 uh, that talks about renewing your mind and not conforming to the patterns and the ways of this world, but renewing your mind. And um, that's what we do when we read scripture. That's how we differentiate that's how, where we find hope when it feels like there is no hope because we know that we have a hope in a future and we know that what has been wrong in this world will be made right and that's the hope that we have in christ is that we will be with him someday um, and the way that god intended for the world to be that is what we will experience and that's in all these things that's the hope we have is it God's plan to have all these problems in the world? Mm. I don't think it's God's plan to have all these problems in the world. Um, God was pretty clear at the beginning of Genesis, um, beginning of the Bible, laying out what his plan for man was. And he was real clear that it was about being in relationship with him, with one another, with the earth, with um, our surroundings. And when sin entered into the earth and in, into the world and we decided that our way was better than God's way. Um, we opened up for a whole world of trouble. <laughs> and uh, some of that is, is unfortunately mental health problems. Um, things are not as they're meant to be and as they will be one day. Why has God allowed mental health to decline in people, specifically over these past 18 months? Yeah, so... Um, Mental health issues are, are a consequence of lots of things. They're a consequence of um, what we think about our own emotions, like what we think is good and what we think is bad. And 
uh, and our circumstances. So the last 18 months has been a difficult time for people. We've lost a lot of the outlets and resources that we're used to that help us. Um, we've been limited in space, um, had all kinds of obstacles that uh, we weren't necessarily prepared for. And it's brought to attention a lot of different things for people. Uh, it's made some people anxious, um, some people depressed, some people angry. Um, some people have really loved it. They've really enjoyed the quiet and the solitude, you know. Um, but in terms of what God, God allows, um, you know, because we have choice, we live with the consequences of our choices. And sometimes that means if I'm, uh, if my usual way of coping with something is not to think about it and to go out and play or be with people or put all my effort into work, and then all of a sudden those things go away because you can't leave the house, then you don't have an outlet. And so that can make it difficult for people. Will we still cry out for joy when we are reconciled by Jesus? That was such a good question because when we were talking the other day, we were talking about there's going to come a day. Um, and the book of Revelation talks about where there is no more sorrow and no more tears. And, and um, you brought up, well, will we cry for joy? And um, I sure hope so is my answer. Um, you know, the, the various expressions that we have in our emotions um, are releases of things. So when we cry, we, we release the feeling, whether it be sorrow or um, laughter, humor, or, or joy. And so if it doesn't look like tears, I'm not sure what it's gonna look like, but I'm sure there will be a lovely way for us to express our joy. How can we help our friends or be empathetic in times of distress for them or us? That's a great question. So being empathetic um, is about listening and it's about trying to really hear what it's like for someone else. And so one of the things we can do is be quiet when they speak and not necessarily try to tell them about your experience of what happened because it might have been very different for you if you something similar happened. Um, so really just listen to what it's like for them and let them know that you heard them and that um, you're, you're there to support them. You don't have to fix it for them. Um, you don't have to hold all their um, problems, but it's helpful to share your burden and have somebody hear you and listen and understand. When I mentioned about mental health declining, when you think about feelings and how people feel on the inside, ki young kids, if they, hear, if they hear this, or people that are in the charge, they'll think about inside out, which we mentioned when we were talking on Monday. Yeah. And I think that even though it's an animation, it's it, it's kind of how they think about what's going on in someone's head or how they're feeling. And it talks about joy and sadness going away and only fear, disgust and anger staying. And if it was like that with everyone in the world, it'd be pretty grey. Yeah, well, I think it's a great movie to really show that um, kind of the classic line for a counselor is sad things are sad and sometimes we feel sad and we've got an idea in our culture that we're supposed to be happy all the time mm -hmm. and that's not the human condition and if we go back to the original question about what does the Bible say about mental health you know open up the book of, of Psalms and hear the anguish. You know, Psalm 51 is all about the anguish of King David and his separation from God. And um, sad things are sad. And when we don't allow ourselves to feel the emotions that we feel, other things come up. So fear can take over, anger can take over, resentment can take over. Um, when we don't allow ourselves to 
be in the thing we're in. And I don't mean like, you know, marinate in it and, you know, I'm just going to be miserable forever. But um, understand, like, yeah, this thing happened and made me sad or this thing isn't going to happen and that makes me disappointed or angry or we were talking about, you know, I've got a, an exam tomorrow. Have a, by the way, how was your exam? It was, it went very well. Good. 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 Congratulations. Um, but, you know, we've got an exam coming up and um, I feel anxious. That's all quite normal and those emotions are there to spur us into some kind of action. If I'm anxious about my exam, I study for my exam. If I'm um, angry about the potholes in my street, I call my council and I do something about it and get the potholes filled. Yeah, and so they're useful. They can be useful emotions. You need to do something about it. Yeah. Don't let the emotions take over you. No, they're there to prompt us. Yeah, absolutely. So this is something that, that I, we haven't talked about, but if you were to sum up how you think the, the world has been feeling in the last year and year and a bit, how would you sum up how, people have, how you think mm. people are feeling? Unprepared. I think what happens is that we get used to our routines and our life, even sometimes when they're not good. You know, you could be in a bad situation, but you get used to that bad situation. You know how to handle it. You, you know, uh, you may not like sitting in school all day long, but you know that you're going to sit in school all day long, you know, five days a week. And you're prepared for what that means. And when all those things got taken away, people were really unprepared. And so we had a whole bunch of combination of things um, come at us, unknowns, uncertainties, um, people getting ill, fear of people we love getting ill or ourselves. And it wasn't just us that was going through it. It was everyone around us. And so we kind of bounce off each other and um, my anxiety or fear causes you to respond to how I'm behaving and back and forth. And so that may have caused um, some issues at home. You know, people might have been a bit snappy with each other or, uh, and people respond to those things differently. Sometimes people shut down or back away. Other times people um, embrace, you know, want to be with others. You know, people have different ways of responding. So it's been a really tough 18 months lots of disappointments, um, and uh, things are not ever going to be how they were before. And so we're learning what that looks like and figuring that all out. Um, but I think when we come through something like this, you think about what came out, like what did I miss that I wanna make sure I do? What did I start to do that I wanna keep on doing? So maybe I spent more, you know, I ate dinner more with my family or I went on walks more often or um, I just kind of chilled. I wasn't running to this practice and that event and this friend's house all the time. And it was kind of nice just to have a little time. But you kind of take the meaning away from what you learned and it, it has you grow and... Um, I know for me personally, I've learned to enjoy my home more than I ever had before. Um, I was so used to making plans all the time and being with people or doing things. And I, I still like those things, but I also really like to be at home. So with, in terms of how other, if you're in a household with a brother or a sister or a mom and a dad, if you're feeling like if you're feeling angry or sad or, or you're anxious, could you say that if you are feeling that and you're around those other people and you're not by yourself, it can kind of act like a yawn if you see someone else doing it, they start to act. Oh, like absolutely, that. yeah. We're totally sensitive to what's going on in somebody else. And usually it produces a different kind of response. So if I'm feeling anxious and I talk to you all angry, you're going to respond to me 
and you might respond to me in a, okay, whatever you say, Wendy, kind of way, or you might respond to me in a, you're not the boss of me kind of way, um, and that'll kind of cause uh, obvious friction. Um, and so the goal, and it's a, it's a, um, a psychological modality called transactional analysis. And the goal is that we try to speak to each other on an adult level. And you don't have to be an adult. Speak on an adult level. And what I mean by that is if I say to you, um, hey, Gabe, I'm having a tough day. I'm feeling really anxious. Um, I'm a little snappy, tired. Um, just wanted, don't want you to fix it or anything. Just want you to be aware I'm feeling a little sensitive today then you know what's going on with me and you don't mistake it. And if I snap at you, you don't go, you're not the boss of me. <laughs> you know, it, you, you say, you know, hey, Wendy, you know, you told me you were feeling a little sensitive and, you know, I hear you being a little snappy. Is there something I can help you with? And then all of a sudden I go from being snappy to being, thanks, Gabe. Yeah, actually, whatever it is I need. And, and, that's the goal and you know I, I usually say if we can keep that state about 80% of the time we're doing pretty good. Thank you so much Wendy for coming to talk to us today. If I could ask you to sum up your answer what does Christianity say on mental health in one sentence what would it be? Mm. Um, I had a really good answer the other day <laughs> and now I'm blank. Um, what would it be in one sentence? Um, the, the human condition. It's to be expected. Um, it's, it's part of our experience here on Earth. Thank you so much, Gabe and Wendy. If you are struggling with your emotions or your mental health, maybe they feel overwhelming, you can't control uh, the anger or the sadness or uh, doesn't feel quite normal. Um, I really encourage you to speak to uh, an adult that you trust. That might be myself or one of our other charge leaders. It might be a teacher at school. It might be uh, your mum or dad or someone close to you that you trust. Um, it's good to talk about these things and make sure that you're getting the help that you need. That might be that everything's perfectly normal, or it might be that you need some extra support from, from doctors or people like Wendy. Um, it's really good to go and get help and uh, just have someone to listen to you. And we love to do that here at Charge. So if you really do need someone to chat with, please do email me, grace at stjohnsegan.com or message us on any of our social media platforms. We love to talk to you. Good morning. This is the final question uh, for Ask Andy. And the question is, why is now such a good time to share faith? When you read the uh, New Testament, you can really pick up a sense, can't you, um, that uh, you know there is this urgency to uh, share the good news. And uh, I remember in the 1980s when I was growing up, Yes, I am that old. Um, there was also this sense of urgency. Um, people were writing books, they were giving speeches, um, even making songs about Jesus returning soon. Now, I can remember uh, being made to sit in church and watch this film called Thief in the Night. And I think it was really a film that was designed to scare people into faith. Um, but I think that the background to all this may have been that uh, we were experiencing the, the end of the Cold War and uh, you know there was a real um, concern across the world about nuclear weapons and the, the world was in a precarious state. Um, and I think you know by the 1990s that was all forgotten really. But right now um, you know, the world has been shaken by COVID, hasn't it? 
and, and lots of people have experienced loss in one way or another. They've lost people, they've lost jobs, all sorts of you know, bad things have been happening. Uh, and people are hurting. Lots of people are seeking comfort and, and peace and joy in their lives right now. People, I think, are receptive and uh, they're, they're looking for hope. Uh, which reminds me, um, in, in 1 Peter uh, chapter 3, uh, we can read this in, in, amongst a, a paragraph about suffering but doing good. You can read this which says, um, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect and that's it isn't it it's about this hope that we have um, so as the summer approaches um, hooray you say you got your holidays keep that hope inside of you and uh, remember to pass it on to your friends in the little things that you do and the little things that you say so um, I will see you Sunday. Until then, have a good week. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Andy. Has it been brilliant to have him ask, answering our questions about sharing faith? If you want to know more about that, if there's, there's more that you like, a particular situation that you want some support in and sharing your faith, please do let us know. That is all we have time for this morning. We are so excited to see you next week. Remember to wear clothes that you're prepared to be gunged in because who knows who's going to be uh, the team that gets gunged. I should also say before next Sunday, next Friday, we have a pizza party open house night. We'll be in and around the caddy, uh, socially distanced. We only have 12 people in the caddy at a time, but we're going to have the Xboxes out and the table tennis. We'll play some sports outside. We'll do some craft stuff. And of course, lots and lots of pizza. So please do sign up, bring your friends. We can have uh, groups of you in 15s all around the space. So please do uh, bring as many people as you would like. So see you on Friday or next Sunday and God bless for now.